So what is the opposite of imposter syndrome? I'm often asked this when I give a keynote talk at conferences or in organisations, and the thing is it's not what most people think. I remember back in 2020, just before the pandemic hit, my last in-person keynote back then was actually in South Africa. And it was for a group of business leaders and a brave soul in the audience, a woman raised her hand as I was teaching them how to spot the warning signs for imposter syndrome and set themselves free from it. She said, but if I ditch imposter syndrome, surely I'll be arrogant. Everybody will hate me. Nobody will want to be around me. This is one of the most common misunderstandings about imposter syndrome is that the opposite of imposter syndrome, that secret fear of being found out as a fraud or not good enough, is unbridled arrogance. Or in the extreme case, the Dunning-Kruger effect, which is effectively somebody who grossly overestimates their own confidence and ability, who is unable to take feedback. Yeah, we've had some politicians, <laughs> some leaders in our countries in recent years that have demonstrated that quite well. So the opposite of imposter syndrome is not Dunning-Kruger. It is not arrogance. It's not basically being an ass. yeah? When you set yourself free from the fear of being found out as a fraud, when you set yourself free from the coping strategies that bridge the imposter syndrome gap, that gap between who we see ourselves as being and who we think we need to be to do or achieve something. So we build the bridge of coping strategies over the top. Yep, there's a whole video on that below, by the way, if you want more. When we set ourselves free from self-sabotage, from not speaking up with our ideas, from holding back on showing up as all of who we really are, then what we get that opposite is actually grounded confidence. Feeling comfortable in our own skin. Not needing to put on a persona or pick up an alter ego in order to feel safe like we fit in. The opposite of imposter syndrome is becoming the real you. It is getting to have the impact that your ideas and your dreams deserve. From that place of groundedness, from that place of I'm okay, and it's contagious. When you feel like that, you're giving unconscious permission to those around you to feel that way too. You are free from that flinch when an opportunity comes up that would have caused you to say no when your heart was whispering yes. So the opposite of imposter syndrome is not the Dunning-Kruger effect. The opposite of imposter syndrome is not unbridled arrogance. It is about being happy, being all of who you really are, and making the difference you're here to make, becoming the leader you were born to be. So I'd love to hear from you via the comments on that. How would that feel for you to experience life in that way? And if you wanna take the very first step, if you don't have Ditching Imposter Syndrome yet, go get it, great book, teaches you step by step how to do it. And even before that, if you want to know whether you're running imposter syndrome, make sure you've done my research-backed imposter syndrome quiz. This isn't like a kind of like in a magazine tick box thing. This is backed by two international research studies that I've run to give you an indication as to whether you're actually experiencing imposter syndrome, which of the three types it is, and it gives you a personalized action plan so you can start turning this around today. If you found this useful, please share it, subscribe, Hit the little bell thing so you get a notification for the next episode. And I will see you soon on the next Ditching Imposter Syndrome show.